In this video, I'll give you a tutorial step-by-step -step how to set up beautiful, profitable, elegant TikTok ads. TikTok is the most popular social media platform in the world right now with more than 2 billion downloads, estimated 600 to 800 million monthly active users. But it is not as saturated as Facebook or Instagram, for example, so your CPMs, CPAs, CPIs are going to be, on average, much lower. That's why I think TikTok is the biggest marketing opportunity right now. I spent the last five months of my life creating a course about TikTok on Udemy, and I don't want to brag or anything, but it became the bestseller in the first two days. I'm just saying. Humble brag. My name is Darius. I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Reflectly. During the last half a year, I've had the opportunity to spend over half a million dollars on TikTok ads for various brands in different industries and niches. As a result, I have learned a thing or two, which is why I'm making this video. Before we get started, I do have to let you know you have to apply to get into the TikTok ads and advertise. They're not accepting everyone. But right now on TikTok, you have to apply. Depending on your region and country and your product, you may or may not get approved. We don't know what are the choice criteria for the companies they're choosing, but we do know that if it's anything shady or anything sort of unethical, like alcohol and tobacco, any of these things, you're not likely to get approved. They're actually very strict in terms of what you can advertise right now. The best way to get in is, first of all, just apply on the website. Second of all, if you already know somebody that's advertising on TikTok, ask them for a referral and you're much more likely to get in. And before you ask, no, I cannot get you a referral. I am very sorry. But just post on LinkedIn or Facebook or, or WhatsApp on your social media, ask around, and I'm sure somebody will get you a referral. All right, let's jump in. Here we are looking at the TikTok ads and I'll walk you through the entire process step by step. Um, what are the best ways to optimize? So to start off, there are several different uh, advertising objectives. Depending on your location and product, what you're whitelisted for, you may have more or less advertising objectives. Uh, in this specific example, I'll use conversions because that's just a, sort of the most common. Whether you have a website or an app, you can do conversion optimization. Um, so that means conversion could be add to cart, somebody goes to your website, they add to cart, bam. Or conversion could be a specific event in an app if you're doing app events. Traffic is the usual, as you know, sending traffic to the website. App install is obvious. Video views, also obvious. App new reviews and then reach. Uh, getting as many people as possible. I think the reach and video views only make sense if you are Coca-Cola or you're doing like uh, campaigns for politics. Otherwise, you want to do uh, ideally conversion. So we'll go ahead and select conversions. And on the bottom, as you can see, it gives us a default name. I like to change the name. Over here, we can create a split test, so an A-B test. Normally, when I want to create split tests, I don't do it this way. I just create two identical campaigns. I change one variable. And then I like to do the test myself rather than having the, um, the the system here do it. But that's your choice. There's not much of a difference there, just a personal preference. And we have a budget. I do like to set a budget and I will do a daily limit. So well, let's just say I'll start off with a hundred bucks. Uh, if you don't set a daily budget on the campaign level, you can set it on the ad set level. So the smallest daily budget on campaign level is 50 bucks, but on the ad set level, it's actually 20 bucks. So your lowest budget in total is $20 per day. That's the minimum ad spend you have to do. So we'll just go ahead and click on 50 and we will continue. The ad group level is the most important. This is where all the magic happens, all the targeting, all the good stuff happens here. Now, as you can see, we have the campaign level, ads level, and the ad level. So this is very similar to like Facebook or Google or Snapchat, like any other ads. The, the general structure is pretty much the same. Once you learn Facebook ads and Instagram ads, um, you will know all the basics, but there are some nuances to TikTok. So, uh, start off, we'll have the ad group name and just select it by default. So I usually keep that up. You can also use an existing ad set, but for this uh, specific case, we'll use, uh, we'll create a new ad set. And then we have the placements, which is very similar to Facebook placements, but if you wanted to select, you can only select TikTok, but then they have other apps and other platforms where you can advertise. So newsfeed, and then these other ones are only available, as you can see, in India, or in Japan. And then it's up to you if you want to select newsfeed app series. That's something you should test out. In general, um, I think sometimes you can get more traffic, but it tends to be lower quality traffic. So I per personally would just do sort of TikTok if you're going for, for high quality audience. Otherwise you can select everything automatic and just let TikTok choose where to advertise. Next up, you can select a to block list panel, but that's just for specific brand safety. So do not worry about that. Uh, and over here, we have the ad details. So URL is um, obviously the place where you want to send your traffic and where they should check for the actual 
event for the optimization. We chose conversion events. So I chose my personal website and I'll go ahead and click on the TikTok pixel. This is the most important point. And I will add my current pixel. And then with that pixel, I have two options. There's the, the Play Store button and App Store button, which are just links that leads to an App Store or Play Store. Again, this will depend on your specific situation. If you have an e-commerce shop with uh, people can add to cart, that could be an event that you optimize for. So it depends on whatever is your business case. Ideally, you would optimize the furthest down a funnel so you could try to optimize for purchases or add to cart, or if you're collecting leads, maybe that could also be an event. Um, so I already have these events here because I have created the, um, the TikTok pixel and I've added it to my website. So that is all taken care of. I'm not going to go through all of that shebang right now, but just know if you don't have that pixel, you can click on create new and you'll be able to create a new pixel and put it in. It's fairly straightforward. It's just like the Facebook pixel or any other pixel, very basic. Then we have to go ahead and choose uh, the display name. Uh, the display name is the uh, where it says sponsored and in the actual video in the ad. That's what you wanna put in here. It'll be sponsored by, so I'll just put Darius, whoop, can't even spell my own name, Darius Mora. And then you want to go ahead and click on upload an image. I just uploaded my personal profile picture, but this would be obviously your logo if you're advertising for your business. Uh, as you can see, it will automatically crop it into an image. So you can just upload a uh, block picture and then it will create a circle. So that's what we have over there. And then next up, you wanted to choose the category. So that's obviously what you're advertising for. Now in this case, if this was linked to an app, I would put app install uh, for the category and then Bumble app. And then I would choose whatever that is. This is a hypothetical example, so I'll just put in whatever financial services, but uh, you want to put the category that, that, that resonates with you and your business. And then we have the tags. So the tags are not crucially important right now. And I actually spoke with the TikTok team and I was asking them about the importance and what to do there. Um, and they just said, you can think of it as hashtags. Now hashtags on TikTok are a bit different to hashtags on Instagram. On Instagram, hashtags are super important. They drive a lot of traffic uh, and they are vital to having your content be visible, displayed, and go viral. But on TikTok, hashtags will not bring you new traffic. Hashtags are only used to categorize your content, so TikTok knows where to display that content. Uh, also, the behavior on TikTok is a bit different. People don't really search through hashtags. They display, they get most of the content on the For You page. If you don't know about all this, I have other videos. I have an entire course on Udemy that explains this, but um, people will get most of the content through the For You page for the main page, and TikTok will decide which videos to display to whom based on the hashtags. So as you can see over here, we have up to 20 characters. You can separate them by comma. So in this hypothetical example, let's say we're doing a financial services app and it's an app. So um, maybe it could be like an app that helps people split money. So then I would put money or money app. You could do split payments payments, cash, cash app, whatever is relevant for you. You can do up to 20 tags. Um, I do recommend use all of them, but again, I spoke with TikTok and it's not hugely important right now. Next up, we have the user comments. You can allow comments on default. I do leave them on um, depending on what you're advertising, but I think in general, it's a good idea. If people want to leave comments. First of all, you, uh, if they're going to leave even negative comments, you're going to learn about your users and get some feedback on your creative, which is only a good thing. And also, as they're leaving that comment, that increases the engagement, increases the watch time. It actually helps the videos lower the price of the advertising. So it actually is better for the virality of the video. People can leave comments. So I would leave that on in general. Next up, we have the automated creative. So basically automated creative will have you chance to upload, for example, five videos. You can also upload five headlines and five titles, and we'll go through all of that. And then the automated creative will mix and match all of these um, assets you provide and it will find the best combination. It's very similar to Google Ads. And with Google, you can also upload, I think it's like 20 images and 20 videos and five headlines for apps. Um, and it'll mix and match and find the best uh, variation using their algorithms. So this is very much the same. You can use that if you want, uh, but it works better when you have more of the creative so you can actually find. Next up, we have the targeting. And targeting is probably the most important part of the entire ad creation process, campaign creation process on TikTok. So there are three main ways to target. One is uh, demographic based. Uh, so that's using gender, location, age. The second one is interest based. So as you can see over here, we have different categories for interest, just like on Facebook, people that like, for example, automobiles. Uh, so you can target those. So that's the second one. And then the third category is custom and lookalike audiences. Just like on Instagram and Facebook, 
Custom and lookalike audiences are the most powerful way to advertise at the beginning. If you haven't spent any advertising money on TikTok, the best way to start is create a custom audience than a lookalike audience. Uh, so you can uh, create those from your, from your ads or maybe you have a list of emails that you can provide to TikTok so you can match those emails to TikTok accounts and advertise directly to those. So it's a pretty basic um, setup just like on Facebook and Instagram. So ideally, I would recommend starting off with the custom and lookalike audiences at the beginning. If you don't have that, if you just cannot create a custom audience, you have no customers, no previous experience, you can go ahead and create the demographic targeting and even interest-based targeting. From my experience, interest-based targeting is the least effective form, but you should definitely test everything. Don't believe anything I say, test everything out. Uh, I'll just quickly show you the audiences over here. If you would click, it will give you all of the audiences that are created. And then you can also exclude audiences over here, obviously. If you don't have them, you can create new ones. As I said, you can create a custom audience and then a lookalike audience from that custom audience. To create a custom audience, you can either upload a customer file. So there's just a long list of email addresses. Ideally, at least 10,000 um, emails and contacts you can upload. Engagement, so there's people who already saw some of your previous ads. So you need previous ads for this one to work. App activity, very basic app installs and purchases uh, from your app data. And then finally, website traffic, which is the usual and a very good way to target. So you can retarget your website visitors or create um, a lookalike audience from those. Those are the four different options to create a custom audience. Once you have that, you'll create a lookalike audience. For the lookalike audience, you'll create, you'll select the source. So if you chose website visitors as your source as your custom audience, then you'll choose that in the source. Then they'll ask you if you want to omit or can contain the source. Meaning if you have a list of 10,000 people, do you want to include those 10,000 people in the lookalike audience or do you only want to advertise to the lookalikes? And then which system, operating system, uh, which placement. So this is very similar before. You can specific choose locations and uh, the audience size, narrow, balanced, or broad. So narrow is obviously smaller size, but more, um, more closely matched to the custom audience and broad is obviously the opposite. I would recommend experimenting with all three of them. I've seen all three of them work in different situations. And then you wanna go ahead and select your location. When you first open up your account, you may not have uh, all of the locations whitelisted. So it depends on which country you are and what kind of account you have. You may not have all of the locations available, which is perfectly fine. Um, at the beginning, if you want some more countries, you can ask them. You might be able to get whitelisted for more countries. Usually they introduce them to your accounts as they roll out. Now that we have the selected uh, location, I would put specific gender if it's relevant, age, all of that stuff. Language, I usually leave empty, but up to you depending on where you advertise, what is relevant. And you can also choose the device. So only wanted to advertise to iOS users. That's what I can choose over here and go ahead. One cool thing as well is then you can select a specific device range. So I can select the price of the device that I want to advertise to. So this is one way to, if you wanted to, for example, only advertise high-end products to people who are more likely to have higher income and more disposable income, you would select a um, type of the device price that is higher so people with more expensive phones are more likely to buy expensive items. I usually don't use these, but that's an option. And then over here, we have the daily budget. So you do have to select a minimum daily budget. As remember, we created a campaign budget, but you also have to do the daily one. As I said, the minimum will is 20. Yeah, so the minimum is, yes, minimum is 20. Um, so on the campaign level, I created 50 bucks and then 20 bucks on the ad set level. So I could have two ad sets. Ad sets, each of them would have a $20 budget. That's 40 in total, which is still less than my $50 campaign level budget. All right, then you can also schedule the post to go at a specific time, but that's up to you. And finally, we have the bidding and the optimization. So first of all, you wanna optimize for conversions, not clicks. Um, it doesn't make sense to uh, optimize for clicks. If it's a conversion campaign, you want to uh, train the algorithm to get you people that are most likely to not just click on the ad, but actually take an um, action on your website or your app. So we leave that up. Uh, and then you have the optimization preferences. I usually just leave it by default. The other option is to optimize for clicks during the learning phase and then later on optimize for conversions. But from my experience, just leaving it default, optimizing for conversions at the beginning is the best. And then finally, we have the actual bid per conversion. So as you can see, it will recommend a bid, but this is not very accurate from my experience. It doesn't reflect past performance of the campaigns and the ads. So this is not very relevant. And I've also noticed it's quite inconsistent. So this is probably just a bug. It's a new feature also. They, they just rolled this out very recently. So I assume it's not as sophisticated just yet. It's probably going to improve and get better over time. And I will update this video. If it does improve, 
but as of right now, it's not very consistent. And I've seen that I would get different um, different bid recommendations based um, even for the same campaign. So if the setup was exactly the same, like one day I'll I'll, I'll get zero point thirty six dollars, another day I'll get more or way more, way like, like double that sometimes, but without anything really changing, my performance being pretty consistent. So I do not use this. You can adapt and use that bid if you want, but it's up to you. So whatever your bid might be, let's say we'll do $1 per conversion. Again, it depends on your business. Whatever you calculate is the worth of the action they are taking on the website. So if it's add to cart, maybe $5 is the bid. So you'll put whatever you want to put. And then finally, we have the delivery type. And over here, you can do the standard or accelerated. It just means it'll spend your money very fast. So I don't recommend it. But if you wanted to learn something quickly, you can do that. So I choose the um, standard one. And finally, we have the the, the third-party tracking. So if you wanted, if you are a, a if you have an app and you would need a third-party attribution tool, or you can use some other attribution tools to track that. So I'll skip it for now. But that's something you can do. We'll go ahead and click next and get to the ad level. Now, finally, we are in the ad level and most people ask me questions about the ads because most people are not familiar with TikTok yet and they have no idea what kind of creative works. So let me just start off by saying, do not use images. Images do not work on TikTok. TikTok is a video platform. If people see an image, they're going to skip right away. So I'll just go ahead and click on single video. So over here, we have pretty basic options. I can either upload from computer or add from a library. And that's all the library, um, all the videos that I already have in the library that I've previously uploaded. Or you can create a video. If you create a video, it'll ask you to, to upload images and then you'll sort of create a slideshow. It doesn't work very well. I don't recommend it. But it's something you can try out. It's just I haven't had a really good experience. And then finally, we have the actual video. For the video, again, the creative will depend on your business and, and each of these cases. From my experience, at the beginning, what you can do is you can just recycle your Instagram um, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and Snapchat creatives. The same creatives there will probably work pretty well on TikTok as well, and it's a perfectly good way to start off at the beginning. Once you spend a couple thousand dollars and you start to scale your account, it's a good idea to start creating ads specifically for TikTok. And to be honest, they're not all that different from Instagram story ads or Snapchat ads. Uh, but there are some nuances, uh, for example, music is a huge part of TikTok, so it's something you should take advantage of. And also including titles in the actual ads, just like a text, uh, tends to help a lot because that's something that's used on TikTok organic videos a lot as well. All you have to do then, click submit and you are good to go. You can upload several videos in one, um, uh, in one ad group, so it's perfectly fine. Um, and I do recommend uploading at least five and then you need to compare them and then you'll get the best result and you can push all the way. I have liked the tutorial. This is everything I know about TikTok ads. If you wanted to learn more, you can go ahead and check out my best-selling course on Udemy. Uh, it's a very affordable price. I think anybody can get that one if you want to learn some more. Um, if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching from me or mentoring and you want to go all in on TikTok ads and you're ready to spend a couple thousand dollars on the ads, um, you might be able to work with me directly. I'll include a link in the description where you can fill an application form if you want me as a coach for your TikTok ads and how to scale your TikTok for your business.